Hi, this video is going to be discussing autism and fevers, and in particular, something called the fever effect, which some autistic individuals experience um, when we have fevers. So the motivation for this video is uh, actually because I personally have been sick over the past week or so. Nothing too serious at all, but there were a few days where I had a mild to moderate fever, and I noticed that my anxiety levels, which are usually extremely high, were actually much better um, during the times when I had a fever. And that actually brought to mind uh, a family member of mine who is also autistic and has something quite similar happen um, whenever that person has a fever as well. So at that point, I began wondering whether we just happen to share the same, uh, same quirk or idiosyncrasy or whether there might be a unique reaction to fevers in autistic individuals more generally. So I went down the rabbit hole of Googling autism and fevers and found a few studies that seem pretty interesting, at least to me, and thought I might just share them here. Um, I do want to add as a disclaimer that I am definitely not a medical doctor or a clinician or in any way an expert in immunology, which is the discipline where some of these articles were uh, completed in. Um, I also definitely don't want to give the impression that fevers are generally positive events when they happen to autistic individuals. Um, of course, fevers can be really stressful for a lot of people, autistic people included. And as we're going to see in the research articles, many autistic uh, individuals likely do not feel better at all or experience any kind of um, unique beneficial side effect to fevers at all. Um, so with that said, I am going to go through some of these studies. Um, unfortunately, a key drawback to these studies is that they are um, exclusively, as far as what I could find, um, done from parent reports, clinician reports, or studies on mice. Um, and so there isn't a lot out there on self-reports from autistic individuals about their internal experiences or how they are feeling um, during fevers. Um, but nonetheless, we might be able to use these studies to get an estimation of, of this effect. Um, so the first study is in 2007, and it was called Behaviors Associated with Fever in Children with Autism Spectrum Disorders. Um, this study looked at a group of 30 autistic children and 30 non-autistic, or sorry, 30 autistic children with fevers and 30 autistic children without fevers. Um, and their criteria for fever in the study was 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit um, or more, which would be the equivalent of 38 degrees Celsius or more. Um, so looking at, I guess, more moderate to uh, higher fevers potentially. Um, and in both groups, the group with and without fever, they went through a checklist of what they were calling a aberrant behaviors checklist. Um, the wording I think is a bit limiting because some of the behaviors they looked at were things like repetitive movements. And while they did find that repetitive movements decreased in autistic children with fevers, um, I don't think that repetitive movements are necessarily something that we should be aiming to decrease or that have been indicated to um, be in any way harmful for the well-being of autistic people. In fact, I think it can be quite the opposite. Um, but one metric that they did look at, which might be a closer indicator of the child's mood is um, their uh, metric for irritability. And they found that in autistic children with fevers, um, the irritability scores were lower. So that's potentially indicative that autistic children with fevers are um, potentially feeling a decrease in frustration or potentially a slight increase in mood. Um, I thought that was quite an interesting result. Um, a later study in 2018 interviewed over 2,000 parents of autistic children, and they started by asking parents whether their child showed improvement during a fever, and 17% of parents indicated that their child uh, did show improvement. And then if the parent indicated yes, the researchers would follow up with a set of different categories and ask about changes for each category. Um, again, I think some of these categories may just be related to whether the autistic child is becoming more 
typically acting during a fever or not. Um, there is some indication that autistic individuals may behave more socially, typically during a fever based on these studies. Um, but personally, I don't know if that's necessarily an improvement. Um, I think it could just be a difference that's not really better or worse. Um, but what seemed a bit more interesting is that 59% of parents within the, um, the group that did uh, experience changes said that their child had a positive change in temper and behavior. Um, so in total, that would mean that out of the full group surveyed, about 10.3% um, of autistic children were reported by their parents to have an increase, uh, or sorry, improvement in temper and behavior during a fever. Um, there were also a couple of studies that tried to look at whether this phenomena is just purely temperature based. So whether simply having an autistic person become in a warmer through environment or through another means would replicate the result or whether it's fever specific. Um, so one study looked at mice where they found that mice who experienced social changes during fever and became more socially typical during a fever would also become more socially typical um, if they were just warmer due to environmental changes. Um, and that study found that there was not uh, a change when the increased temperature was due to the environment. So that study did indicate that these changes might be specific to fevers. Um, there was a different study that looked at 15, it was quite small, uh, it looked at 15 total autistic participants, and this was done through a uh, really careful um, environment environmental um, controls or changes um, in autistic children. So, um, for example, children being placed in a carefully controlled warmer environment or um, more typical environment. And that study did find that autistic children who may experience some beneficial side effects from fevers also experience those side effects um, in a slightly warmer environment. So um, I guess these two studies maybe have slightly uh, different indicators, one potentially indicating that it's fever specific, the other indicating that perhaps a warmer temperature in general um, might have a similar effect. Uh, the uh, one key point that I wanted to point out, sorry, is that um, in all of these studies, it's very consistent that the effects or changes are temporary. They are essentially going to occur with the fever, and if they do occur, uh, potentially maybe very shortly afterwards, um, and then we'll leave uh, with the fever as well. So these are not permanent changes at all. Um, and it's possible that I just wasn't able to see this due to not having full access to all of the articles, um, but I'm not sure how these changes vary with the specific degree of fever or um, other related information about uh, potential causes of the fever. Um, I, one of the reasons that I think this is interesting, other than just providing a personal explanation to a phenomena that I likely experience myself, um, is that I believe there's a broader set of uh, unique medical experiences that autistic individuals tend to have. Um, anecdotally, I've heard many autistic individuals say that they have slight differences in how they respond to anesthesia, for example. Um, and I think it would be really interesting, and I hope that research over time can provide more information about what all of these unique reactions are, um, and hopefully, ideally, also ways to tailor medical care to best support autistic patients, because potentially, if an individual is experiencing a unique uh, medical phenomena or an unusual medical phenomena, uh, that may impact treatment, or there may be ways to tailor treatment to best support that individual. Um, but I also am uh, just personally very curious about how autistic individuals feel during and after fevers. I mean, the research articles have indicated the subgroup of individuals who experience fever effect um, based on parent report or based on observations. Um, but what does that actually feel like internally for the child? Um, does the person feel less stressed? Do they feel less anxious? Um, if so, what do they feel is driving it? I think for myself personally, um, one of the benefits of the fever is as a very sensory seeking person, um, a fever is a pretty intense sensory experience. Um, I find, for example, that it's a lot easier to feel more comfortable without necessarily needing to 
provide a lot of other sensory input, um, like I currently do through through rocking or through adjusting the environment or through a lot of exercise. I think fever in some ways brings me a little bit closer to how a typical person might be with their sensory processing. And since the environment is generally set up for people with more typical sensory processing, it just makes things easier in some ways. Um, and likewise, I think with anxiety, um, if your thoughts are just sort of slowed down from a fever, that could include slowing down anxious thoughts, um, which may temporarily um, bring a slight reduction in anxiety, even though that won't be sustainable over the long term. Um, I do wonder sometimes if a portion of this effect might be increased by social expectations that we place on people. Um, I find that autistic children often are going through pretty difficult experiences that may be internal or not fully recognized by other people. Um, it could be due to anxiety, feeling out of place, or having physical problems that the child can't express. Or in some cases, maybe having anxiety or internal challenges that they can express, but that are viewed by others as not being significant or not being fully understandable. Uh, for example, um, in environments where there's not a lot of understanding of sensory processing differences, someone who's sensitive to a certain sensory input might um, be met with skepticism by other people about why they are um, reacting that way to a certain sensory input that others perceive as um, not being a big deal. Um, on the other hand, if someone's exhibiting sort of a tangible symptom like a fever, that person might be met with a lot more empathy. And I wonder if sometimes the increased flexibility that people often receive, and rightfully so, when they have a fever, um, may actually be what a child might need in general, maybe a child does need a more flexible environment and having the chance to get that temporarily could reduce their anxiety or increase certain aspects of their social communication. It might bring their environment a little bit closer to what they need in some ways. Of course, this is very much, um, conjecture is probably going to vary a lot depending on the child and their environment. And I don't think that this really explains everything um, in this effect. I think it could just be a uh, slightly an enhancing factor to the effect in some cases. Um, I know personally, I've often found that physical uh, conditions are sometimes taken a little bit more seriously than those that are uh, a bit more invisible. Um, and if you have both, then at least you're getting treatment for something. Um, so, okay, what is, so the outside of my, my personal conjecture about what may or may not be influencing this effect a little bit, um, what is really the likely root reason? Um, it's probably related to the immune system. Uh, there was a key study done, was published in Nature in 2019, where they looked at um, socially atypical mice and found that when the mice had induced fevers temporarily, um, they had more typical social behavior. And this is believed to be due to an immune molecule, which is released during the fever. And this um, reduces neural activity in the somatosensory cortex, um, which apparently is the area of the brain that senses where the mice's, mouse's body is in space. And I believe it's also responsible for perceptions of sensory input, such as light, touch, et cetera. Um, and is believed to also be where a lot of uh, differences in social communication and uh, neurodivergent traits related to social communication come from. Um, so that sort of concludes my brief review of studies on autism and fear, fever. Um, I hope that it was interesting in some way. And if anyone watching this is autistic and has experiences with fever um, that you'd like to share, whether, uh, whether you've experienced something like this fever phenomena or whether you've experienced the exact opposite. I, uh, I don't think that researchers have looked at that, but I imagine that there might be autistic individuals who perhaps find fevers disproportionately stressful. Um, so whatever your experience is, I'd be very, very interested to read it personally. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Take care.